Well, we of course had the life plan, you know, pay off the student loans, house with the backyard, travel a bit, kids. Had a pretty good pregnancy the first 16 weeks. And then they called us and said that the protein in the blood was elevated, which is abnormal. And that led us to eventually getting Jack's diagnosis. And everything changed in that moment. Myelomeningocele is a birth defect that children have that um, about 80% of them or so are going to, in addition to having the issues associated with the spinal cord defect, will also develop hydrocephalus. The issue of hydrocephalus, or water on the brain, which is a lifetime problem, is a problem that requires management when it develops. It requires often multiple surgeries over a lifetime. The prenatal surgery eliminates that for a significant percentage of children. These kids are not coming back to the hospital as frequently with issues related to their hydrocephalus because they simply don't have it. The morning of the surgery, we got up and I remember feeling fairly calm. I, I think that I was pretty comfortable and knew what to expect and we had met with everyone enough that I, I knew what the procedure was going to be and, and knew how it was going to go. I knew that they were going to stay in touch with Kevin. I remember they came in and they were ready to take me in and they asked, do you want to walk in or do you want to go in a wheelchair? And I was like, I can still walk in. I want to walk in. Like, <laughs> let's do this. I um, remember you walking away down that hallway. Mm -hmm. yeah. This isn't a neurosurgery program, this isn't an MFM program, this is a fetal care program. And so the, the fetal care program is a multidisciplinary group that includes all the specialists that would interact with mom's care. To have a program where you can offer complex fetal surgery, it requires the presence and the infrastructure of a strong overall collaborative program. The objective of surgery is to close the myelomeningocele with as little or no scar tissue as possible and to recreate the layers that should have normally formed. And so it's to close the placode or the neural tissue into a tube and to close the dura or the covering of the spinal cord uh, as it should have normally formed. Ideally to pull in fascia or connective tissue as it normally would be there and then to have the skin covering so that they don't need to be treated for hydrocephalus. And then Dr. Goodnight came out after the procedure was done and gave us an update and said everything went well and uh, you were up resting in the recovery room and then we'd be able to come and see you. You know, overall you were, you were a trooper. <laughs> we were well cared for. We had a good team. Even to this day when I tell people about Jack's diagnosis and what that means, and it's not until you meet him that you can see beyond the diagnosis. Hi, buddy. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. Hi, buddy. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to do this long enough now that I've watched people graduate from high school, get married, have families, have jobs. I joke with them when they come to my clinic that I'm gonna schedule extra visits so that they can just come see me and visit me in clinic because I love hearing how they're doing and how they're developing and you know how they're doing in school and playing sport. He gives you the sweetest looks and the biggest smiles all the time and he's just, he's a really good boy and he's very resilient. He's really the opposite of the picture that was painted for us when we got his diagnosis in December. Every doctor we met with in the UNC fetal surgery team, they were so patient and they just took the time to make sure that we were very comfortable. Their optimism and, and hope really gave us optimism and hope.